I'm Christy Keenan and this is my executive summary for measurement and assessment. The research question that I looked at was what are effective methods to assess the oral language abilities of foreign language learners? I have a lot of experience studying second language acquisition First, as a student trying to learn a foreign language, in particular, I learned Spanish. And then from the role of a teacher in helping students to learn Spanish and also English as a second language. In all of those areas, I've noticed that the most challenging part of second language action is making the jump from understanding a language to truly becoming a fluent speaker of the language. And since the main goal of learning a foreign language is typically for communication purposes, I really try to focus a lot of attention on practicing speaking skills and verbal communication in the Spanish classes that I currently teach. I've also assessed my students' speaking skills in a variety of ways, such as oral presentations or group skits, um, interviews, but I wanted to find out what the experts thought was the most effective way of assessing oral language proficiency. Some of the more popular oral testing methods that I came across were things such as monologues, interviews with the teacher, role plays between students, doing paired orals between students, or also elicited imitation where students are repeating something that they hear. But what I really discovered is that there's not one right way of assessing oral proficiency, but in fact the best method really depends entirely on what type of oral language competency you're really evaluating. I found that my research showed that there are three generally agreed upon areas of competency to consider as part of oral language. The first one is grammatical or linguistic competency. This is the students being able to show that they understand the morphology, the syntax, the semantics, and phonology of the language. And this is most effectively evaluated through interviews. This is one area that interviews actually do a really good job of being able to evaluate these things. Um, another option would be monologues or role plays as well. The second area is conversational competency. And this is the student's ability to perform openings and closings of a conversation to establish or to change a topic. Also to interrupt politely and to listen and react to a speaker. And this is most effectively evaluated through peer-to-peer -peer performances, such as role plays or paired orals. The last area is processing competency. And this was an area that I hadn't necessarily considered before, or at least not considered assessing it formally. But this is the automaticity and the speed of response. And the best way to really evaluate this would be through elicited imitation. And two types of that would be sentence repeating or sentence building. And the sentence repeating is where students would hear a complete sentence and then they would respond to that and repeat it back using the same type of intonation and pronunciation that they heard. Or in sentence building, they would also hear a complete sentence, but it would be broken into three chunks and put in random order. And it would have a monotone type intonation, and then students would need to repeat that sentence back in the correct order. One thing that I found very interesting in my um, research was that language proficiency interviews really have been historically the most common form of oral language testing. For example, the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate use a type of language proficiency interview and their language proficiency interview is a very structured, standardized test that contains three different parts and each part has a fixed amount of time. And this really allows for reliability due to this type of standardization. 
but it's not as valid because it really limits the freedom of proficiency of the more advanced learners because of the really specific parts and questions. Another example would be the American Council for the Teaching of Foreign Languages. They also use a language proficiency interview to assess fluency of speakers. And their test is a much more fluid and interactive test. They don't have any suggested questions or any specific tasks. And this can be good and bad. It really does aim for validity. They're able to modify the test according to the level of the speaker, of the student. Um, but it also leaves open issues of comparability, interview style. And that really is an important aspect of reliability. One of the things that I did find very interesting about the use of the language proficiency interviews is that many of the studies that I was reading have shown that these language proficiency interviews are not really a valid measure of true conversational fluency. Judith Cormo said one problem with the most commonly used forms of language tests, the oral proficiency interviews, is that they are unequal social encounters. Thus, they inherently resemble interviews rather than natural conversation. And to explain this a little bit, it just is that these language proficiency interviews don't really allow the test taker to choose the new topics or to hold the floor, interrupt the interviewer, or to react conversationally to the speaker because the interviewer holds so much power than the test taker does. So an alternative to the LPI, the language proficiency interview, is peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And this has been increasing in popularity since the late 80s. And it may become the new standard for assessing true fluency because it's two students that are having a conversation with each other or perhaps doing a role play. And the interviewer really isn't involved at all, but they're just sitting back and watching the interactions to rate them. And that allows for a much more natural conversation. So all of this research just has made it really clear to me that I need to vary the types of oral assessments in my classroom and that I need to be more intentional about matching my methods to the specific area of competency that I really want to assess. So I will look at a little bit more in my paper, but thanks for listening. These are the references that I used and that I spoke about in the um, presentation, so if you are interested, feel free to read more about them. Thank you.